Admiral Bill Stubblefield, William, thanks for coming in today. Good morning, Rob. Great to be here. And you're living right, my friend. Just before you, the power said be coming back on at 1030, and right at the time the show starts, power came back. Boom. You did right. Delegate Michael Hyde in the house. Good morning, Good Michael. Good morning. Good morning. You must be living right, Robert. Uh, if I was living right, the power wouldn't have gone out in the first place. <laughs> Yeah, I'm not sure what happened. About an hour ago it went out, but uh, we're back. We're grateful for it, and let's get to the business of the day with the mayor of the city of Martinsburg, Kevin Knowles, who had, an, uh, along with the city council uh, members and uh, emergency personnel, had an adventurous night last night. Kevin, good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you for coming in. What happened at the city council meeting last night with this bomb threat? Well, you know, we were conducting business as usual uh, at the city council, and we had a uh, uh, petitions from the uh, citizens, and we had a, a group of people that were uh, pro-Palestinian and wanting to see a ceasefire in, in the Gaza Strip, and they've been coming to meetings for the last uh, two or three months, and uh, it's a quite a big-sized group, and once the petitions for citizens were over and we started to get into the the, the meat of the, the meetings, uh, doing city business, uh, there was a bomb threat that was called into uh, the police department where we hold our meetings right now. And at that time, uh, the um, deputy chief and uh, Matt Zollinger, he, you know, he came in and we got everybody out, uh, evacuated the building. The um, participants or, or the audience were, were taken out front and they took uh, the council and the mayor uh, to the back of the building. At that time, uh, you know, we didn't want to... Uh, uh, deter us doing any business, and uh, we were determined that we weren't going to let this stop us from carrying business on within the city. And and um, I conferred with uh, uh, Ken Sarah and, and the rest of the council, and, and we proceeded to uh, go down to Bowles Rice and, uh, and finish the business for the city for that day. Who's conducting the investigation with this bomb threat, Kevin? I believe it's in conjunction with the city of Martinsburg and the FBI right now. Federal authorities are involved. Yes, yes. Uh, and, you know, that's, you know, it's quite quite the scare with everything that's been going on. And, you know, I've had uh, conversations with the mayor from Charleston, uh, uh, Mayor Goodwin, and, uh, you know, she, they've, they've had uh, protest and, uh, and the same type of uh, pro-Palestinian uh, groups coming to their council meetings. And she's had to get uh, police escorts home several times uh, since that's been happening down there. So we got to take this very seriously. You know, I understand everybody has their thoughts, uh, but uh, uh, the, the city council has not come to me or have I brought to them any, uh, any thoughts of putting anything on the agenda to put a, uh, a, a proclamation for a ceasefire in, in the Gaza Strip. And, I, and I, honestly, I don't see that happening. We're, we're local individuals, we're local government, and that's who we, who we serve. We, we don't get involved, and in, we try not to get involved with the, the legislators and what they do. We try not to get involved with uh, the federal government. We need to take care of what's, what's happening right in our neighborhoods. Bill? Yeah, Kevin, do you have the capability, uh, the legal capability, of screening out everyone except a citizen of Martinsburg? In other words, could you check IDs at the at the door and allow only those residents of Martinsburg in? You know what? I, I, I don't know how legal that would be because we have uh, business owners that, that, that don't live in the city, and uh, they have every right to come to the council to hear, hear what's being said. They have every right to, to speak their mind during the uh, petitions from citizens. Uh, I think what we would be doing moving forward is uh, – uh, you know, putting the, uh, I hate to say it, the metal detector that uh, people have to go through. We have not had to do that. And, uh, you know, we have a set limit of individuals that, uh, of people that could be in that room. Uh, it's the capacity is 84. And, and uh, you know, the the uh, city police have been uh, tasked with counting the people. And as if it gets to over that, then, then unfortunately they're going to have to be directed outside and, and they can view it online because we do online uh and, and, the, and the number of protesters are approximately how many, say, 84 capacity for the room. Of that, how many are, are protesters? Well, uh, I, I, this, for this meeting, there was less than have been in the past. Uh, I think at the highest that they had was probably 70, 75 in, in the past. And there, well, there was over 50 uh, at this meeting. You know, I, I'm, I'm going to assume, and correct me if I'm wrong, that uh, this was basically a 
a peaceful protest up until the point where you got the the bomb threat and uh, the, there's right now there's no correlation between the two. Correct. There are, there is no correlation. I want to make that clear. It it you know it just looks bad because of uh, of the peaceful sure. uh, aspect of it. Uh, and, and and for that to happen, you know that. You know that puts a lot on uh, on, on a councilman to, to be able councilman councilwomen to to come there w wondering whether they're going to be safe or not. You know, and we're fortunate to have a very good police department and, and fire department that we're we're ready for stuff like that. But we, why should we be ready for that? We're just you know we're dealing with local business and we're trying to do the the, the next right thing, the best thing for the community. And to have something like that, it's just uh, I'm not we're not running away from it. Sure. Yeah, Kevin, not trying to be philosophical, but they old saying democracy is messy, and this is one of the side aspects of it. Fortunately, it's peaceful, and I think about there's been a few examples in the U.S. where it was not peaceful, numerous examples in Europe, numerous examples in the Middle East where the, it's not a threat, it's actuality. So we have a, it's, it's, it's disruptive to you, I understand that, but at least we have a lot to be thankful for. It doesn't take the other step. You're, you're absolutely right. And, and I guess well, my concern, and, and I, I would believe other members of the council, is that we wouldn't want to see that outside influence come here and influence people or even bring something like that here uh, to the city of Martinsburg. How many of those individuals, when they, I'm assuming they got up and spoke at the, at the meeting itself, and, and what exactly was their frustration? What exactly did they want to see the, the city of Martinsburg do? Uh, what was their protest? Well, they're, they're looking for uh, cities. There. I, I believe they're working with uh, Winchester and trying to do something in Winchester and with Neard to have uh, a city in, in the state of West Virginia, because there hasn't been one in the uh, state of West Virginia, to, to come up with some type of proclamation or some kind of uh, document to ask for a ceasefire in the Gaza Strip. And, and again, that, that's not something that, that we're involved in. I don't see that uh, being put on the agenda at this time. They did present with uh, over 200 signatures. I can't tell you whether those signatures were people that were from the city or from outside the city. I haven't seen that as of yet. Uh, but again, Bill's right. It's peaceful. And, and we welcome all the, all the, the peaceful protests that, that people may have. It's, but it's, at the it's same around. time, I'm assuming the city of Martinsburg has no intention of a proclamation in favor of I Israel either, do they? No, no. Uh, at least that's not the flavor that I'm hearing coming from uh, the council, we have not had those discussions, and, and it's not something coming from me or a recommendation from me at this time. The tone of the protesters when they come up and uh, publicly speak, is it menacing or is it just factual or hostile? Or what is the tone? Very p passionate. Passionate, I would say. And, uh, you know, um, the rhetoric is, uh, uh, whether it's truthful or not, I, I couldn't tell you, to be quite honest, Bill. I mean, they're you know, they're talking about... Uh, uh, killing babies and children and and keeping them out of school and, and unfortunately that's what war does and and uh, you know just uh, very very passionate that they, they believe in what they're talking about and I and I commend them on that but uh, we just don't want to see it to go to another level. Kevin, can you comment on the tracking system with your 911 system to be able to actually find out who made this call? Well, it's my understanding, and, and now it's under investigation, so I can't really talk much about it. But it's my understanding up to this point that a, a message came through our 911 system, then was relayed to our police department, to our deputy chief, and that's when uh, things started rolling. So uh, as far as the process and that, Rob, uh, I couldn't tell you, and I, I don't know if anybody could at this point because of the uh, under investigation at this time. I know my next-door neighbor has little kids, and one of them accidentally dialed 911, and emergency services showed up at my door, knocked on the door, and asked about an emergency and I had no idea what they were talking about. It was the next door neighbor's kids. So I know they can track those calls. Obviously when they come in, even if you hang up and call, if you call 911 and hang up, you're probably still going to get a response to your address. Well, and there's also a uh, very, a lot of these apps and different ghost calls that you can use ghost sure. numbers for that too. So I'm, I'm assuming at this point that uh, from my understanding, the number was a Texas number, uh, but we don't, we don't know. 
full details. This would be a good question to ask Gary Wine next time he's in because it's my impression that Berkeley County, which Martinsburg gets their information through the Berkeley County 911, uh, has fairly up-to-date equipment, and I assume that would be some monitoring capability as well. I don't believe this this call went through oh, 911. Is that right? I believe it came right to the uh, dispatch of the police department. Okay, you yeah. used 911. You mentioned yeah. it a while ago. Okay. Uh, Kevin, in regards to uh, the number of times these folks have attended meetings, this is the third time? Uh, at least the third time, yes. At least the third time. Is there an, is there an indication that they are going to remain local? Uh, remain local as far as continuing, continuing to, to attend meetings, uh, to establish uh, offices in Martinsburg? Well, there, uh, I believe there is an office that has been established, uh, and, and uh, the office is uh, right next to a uh, city hall that's being renovated on Queen Street. Is there any indication that maybe this threat was phoned in by people who were against this group that was speaking out at the meeting? You know what? I couldn't speak to that. I, I don't know who called it in. I don't know who. Nobody's taking credit or, or for for the call. All, all we know that uh, this is how the co council meeting went, and this is what the result was. What measures have you been taking in regards to beefing up security at these meetings, and what will be the measures going forward? Well, we want to make sure everybody's safe. So, uh, yes, we, we had gotten uh, wind that there might be a protest this evening, or yes, last night. So we did have some extra uh, police uh, in, in the audience and also uh, uh, protecting the doors. Will you be doing even more going forward? I think we will be doing just the same that we've been doing uh, as of last night, which was a little more than we've had in the past. Is there any indication that you might cancel some meetings going forward? There's no indication that we would cancel any meetings at this point. Any other information you can give us on this? Uh, not, not at this point. Uh, I just can tell you that uh, uh, the city of Martinsburg, the administration, and the elected officials aren't going to be bullied by uh, any type of uh, threat like this, and we're going to continue to move forward and do business. Uh, any other day of the week, this would be the leading story, but it's just been that kind of a week. Uh, recently, a dead body was found, city of Martinsburg, uh, police responding to it. Any information on that, Kevin? I don't have any information on that this time. Very good. Any other questions for Mayor Knowles? No. Thanks for coming in, Kevin, and thanks for letting us know about it early. Yeah, and you're welcome for the lights. I brought the lights with me. <laughs> you have power. Because I'm electrified. You literally have power. <laughs> the luck of the Irish game. you gave game. it to us this morning as well. <laughs> you are electrified, that's for sure, Cal. Speaking of power, uh, Board of Education member Melissa Power will join us after the break. This is Talk Radio, WRNR Martinsburg and TV 10.